night in the Rue Morgan Mansion. Our hosts are up to no good. Hey everybody, welcome to Rue Morgue TV. Executive Andrea, what? I want to be drunk Andrea from the future. Watch how I <laughs> yes. got here. Yeah. <laughs> Executive Andrea, editor Subasati speaking here, and we just hit 10,000 subscribers here on Rumor TV. It is a momentous occasion. Mike, aka Whiskey Morg, um, to get me drunk, and I drank all this whiskey. I think we were successful. A whiskey morgue. <laughs> this is drunken executive editor Andrea Subasati. Thanks to you guys. Um, thank you so much for subscribing, for liking our content, and enjoy this episode. We're about to get wrong. That was still the shit sandwich. <laughs> Welcome to Horror on the Rocks on Room Org TV, where I pair what I'm drinking with the horror movies that I'm watching. I'm Mike from Whiskey Morg. Today I'm joined by none other than the horror queen of the North, the executive editor of Room Org Magazine, Andrea Subasati. And we're going to switch things up today and have some fun. Uh, I'm going to put Andrea through a fright flight of different whiskeys and ask her some intoxicating questions. Andrea, are you ready? I think so. Uh, don't know a whole lot about whiskey, but I, I'm, I'm smelling it and salivating uncontrollably. It's a good start. It means you're immune to, uh, to the whiskeys. <laughs> All right, so first up is Jack Daniels Single Barrel. Um, this is a, a more elevated version of our traditional JD. Comes with less memories of um, bad decisions and regret. We'll see. <laughs> That's this one? Yeah, this one here. The far left? Yeah. Okay, so... It, it smells Does like. It smell like JD. It smells like a good time. I don't know, like what? It's kind of caramely. Yeah, I don't know. It smells both deeply toxic and poisonous, but very appealing at the same time. The As upper, it should, yeah. So this one assessment. is aged a little bit more than traditional Jack Daniels. Uh, you go from forty percent up to like we're forty eight percent. So okay. we got to kick in that. So yeah, this is this is like the uh, the fancier version. Okay. of Okay. Uh, because Daniels. it's old. Older, yeah. Like me. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Are you gonna, are you gonna, oh, okay. Mm. We'll taste it. <sighs> Measure them on half. <laughs> it's a warming sensation. It's, but is this one that you would like drink straight like this? Yeah, I mean, it's it's one that I drink straight, but it also it, it kind of shines in a cocktail <laughs> being a little bit more spicy and higher proof. So Jack Daniels, um, it's hard not to drink it and uh, um, think of the, of the shining and that Iconic bar scene. <laughs> Speaking of which, you got to um, spend some time at the Stanley Hotel um, doing some press for Doctor Sleep, where you had some drinks um, at the hotel. If you ever go to the Stanley Hotel, uh, you fly in and then you have to drive quite a ways and you're driving into the mountains. It's, it's exactly like the, uh, the opening of the film and you can feel the altitude start mm. to hit you. And then you get there and you check in, you're like, boy, I'd like a drink, but careful, because the altitude mm. will fuck you up. I remember there was some like 60 year old men who were probably on like I don't know, a golfing trip or something, and they were white girl wasted on the patio, <laughs> like rowdy and falling down and stumbling. And so, so yeah, I drank carefully up at, uh, at the Stanley. You slipped me a bottle of bourbon? A little glass and some ice. You can do that, can't you, Lloyd? You're not too busy, are you? <laughs> no, sir. I'm not busy at all. What's cool is like when you were there, they have a whiskey bar now um, at the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, so they also had an oxygen bar. <laughs> <laughs> Both need it. Well, I'm, and I'm glad that at least I know my dollar will go further now um, if I go there and I only need two instead of ten drinks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, up next is High West Campfire. So they're out of Utah. Fittingly, we're kind of like leaving off in Colorado and kind of starting number two in Colorado. Oh, it's a uh, tour. Yeah, it's a tour. Um, and this one is this innovative blend between um, peated scotch, bourbon, and rye. Super smoky. Um, says it's best experienced with friends around a campfire. So you smell the smoke right away. I do smell the smoke. It's like you're right there. You're at the campfire. It's like I'm burning alive in it. It's like I'm being burned at the stake. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Let's do it. Cheers. Wow. 
Sunday were different. Yeah, a whole thing, a bunch of a bunch of stuff going on in there. A whole bunch of stuff going on. First of all, it goes down easier. There's like less of a burn, I find, than with the uh, Jack Torrance stuff. Mm-hmm. But then like the sweetness comes through, like the the little bit of like the the traditional like bourbon sweetness and yeah. a little bit of like a honey note mm-hmm. on there. Like um, someone took honey Lysol and just sprayed it around. <laughs> and it's not quite doing the job, <laughs> but it's softening the blow. Originally, I go right to Friday the 13th. You got to do something really cool uh, a few years back where Room Work uh, took a poll on who you would interview at Frightmare, Frightmare in the Falls. And it was a Kane Hodder who, um, who was voted in. Beers with uh, the Jasons, that was... Um... I don't know. I'm trying to remember what other guests were, were there that year. Was that the year Doug Bradley was there? I believe so. He yeah. might have been. He's, he's a sophisticated man. He's mm. an erudite man. We wouldn't have been cracking beers. We would have been drinking fucking, I don't know. High West Campfire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you got to choose anybody else to drink with, though. Oh, you know, I almost wonder if this is a tasteless answer, given the way he went out. But uh, Oliver Reed... Mm. The horror community is rife with stories about Oliver's drunken antics. And I forget what it was he shot in Toronto, but he tore a strip through this city. And uh, <laughs> I wish I could have been a fly on the wall. How about you? I would go, I'd go Joe Bob Briggs. Oh, okay. He's like, I'm a big fan of The Last Drive-In. And when I watch it, I usually have my, my whiskey poured. And mm-hmm. I know he's a whiskey guy. He's like witty, super intelligent. He's like the fun uncle. Mm-hmm. A few months back, um, he actually served shots of Wild Turkey 101 to everybody in the audience. He was hosting a, a, a movie. Oh, yeah, funny. yeah, and it was illegal. Um, they said that Idaho law, that it was illegal, and he still poured it up and went for it. And I was like, that's the kind of guy I want to hang out with and uh, have drinks with. Here's to you, Joba. All right, let's finish this off, Joba. JBB. Meow. Yeah, meow. So up next is Metallica's Blackened Whiskey. And um, yeah, this is from their master series where they collaborate. So Rob Dietrich, who is their master blender, collaborated with Wes Henderson of Angel's Envy, which I gifted you a bottle that one time of Angel's Envy. Yes. So the cool thing about Wes is that he doubles as a whiskey maker and the uh, town corner. He, in theory, is the real whiskey morgue. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so he is the real whiskey morgue. And what's cool with this thing, their whole angle is they take the, the bourbon put it in an entirely new barrel. So this here is a white port. Um, they put it in a white port barrel and they use what they call a black noise sonic enhancement where they pummel the barrels with low frequency Metallica playlists. Oh my God. Yeah, so imagine walking in front of a bass amp like at a show and it's like pummeling you. Like that's what's happening to the barrel. So the whiskey's interacting with the barrel and getting all those flavors even more. Come on. Sweet, right? This whiskey is fused <laughs> yeah. with Metallica, like actually. Yeah. So being a person who's super into music, soundtracks, Ooh. make or break a film. Yes. Do you have a favorite? Oh, man. Second worst question behind what's your favorite horror movie, <laughs> Yeah, right? I know, I know. The first CD I ever bought in my life was the Lost Boys soundtrack. Love, I'll go with Queen of the Damned for okay. for like oh, in terms of like 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 soundtrack. Yes. I guess like not score but soundtrack. Especially around the around the metal arena. Yes. Um all new metal. Yeah. All delightful Lots and all like perfectly complementary to the book and the story and putting Lestat in into, into the 90s goth scene. Absolutely. Good yeah. fucking choice. Right? Did you think it's cool to walk right out to take This one is darker Dark. than the yeah. others. Like when we had metal. the four, metal, yeah, it's dark. metal. It's metal right up your ass. Yeah. Do you get any of the port on it or no? I mean, it's a white port. <sighs> port is wine? Yeah. Wine? Wine? <laughs> <laughs> Fortified wine. Okay. I get like a lot of like raisin prune. Could just be the whiskey asshole in me talking, but. I can smell the whiskey asshole. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's taste I it. I don't know, man. Okay, let's taste it. Cheers. Let's go. Let's go. Shit. Mmm. Oh. A lot of cinnamon on the back end. Ah. You know what? Yeah, I got some of it like stuck in a corner of my mouth where it was. <laughs> yeah, it's to chewy, go. right? It's like. Yeah, there's like taste buds that react to it and taste buds that are like. What the? <laughs> <laughs> and. 58, was it 58%? Jesus Christ! Yeah, we're climbing that ladder. Whew. So, you get your buzz on. You once said that you haven't attended Fantasia until you wake up extremely hungover. And often that's because of karaoke. So, oh, yes. <clears throat> what's your go-to karaoke song? When I hit the karaoke mic, I want to turn the energy up. Yeah. And I want to sing something that I know I can sing out of breath. Wasted. I'll remember the words wasted. Mm -hmm. um, any fist pumping Bon Jovi um, is Bon Jovi always my, does it. Always mm -hmm. does it. My, my go to typically is like a Savage Garden. Like, oh. I want you. Okay. Like okay. that's like the whole the whole imagery, like the dark. Like he was kind of almost like. He's goth. Yeah, goth, right? Like with the hair parted and he was like staring in the camera. I was like, I want to be that when I was younger, right? So. That's not an easy um, song. Like. No, no. And like. Fuck the teleprompter, I'm good. To see if they just close my eyes and I'm taking to a place where you're crystal mine and the gentle feeling to take a shelter in the face of my spot and feel like a chicken cherry cola. We could do it. Where did that just come from? That was like repressed for 30 years. This is my favorite as of yet. Could be because I'm getting drunker. Ping! So, for the last drink, we are not going with whiskey. We are going with something you are very familiar with. That's absinthe. That's definitely absinthe. I do not have the bottle. I have this small little sample bottle that a friend of mine um, knew I was coming on here to chat with you. They sent me this little sample bottle of Fear and Loathing in Kentucky to honor a Kentucky native, Hunter S. Thompson. I mean, we don't need to smell it because you know exactly what it is. I thought maybe we should do sugar and the water and people do the drip, but you're not like that. You're just like, in the fucking glass. I'm not a green no, fairy. No, green fairy, no. We can't stop here. It's bat country. Cheers. Blech. Blech. Whoa. It makes me think of like stealing my dad's Zambuca. Oh, yes. Yeah. Subasati uh, and the Piche. Yeah. Like, are we drinking whiskey um, or are we the Italian national team? So. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was yucky. For me, um, absence, when I think of absence, I think of two things. Like Euro trip, obviously growing up around that time where supposedly you're gonna hallucinate and, and um, uh, hopefully, uh, um, you know, avoid incest. I gotta say, I'm not feeling anything. Me neither. Silver as a judge. How about you? I'm not feeling a goddamn thing. I think of Moulin Rouge. Oh, well, Do you yeah. remember? They have Kylie Minogue in a little in a little cameo as the Green Fairy, and then mm -hmm. at the end of their crazy trip, she's like, ah, and you're like, whoa, are we still touring? Oh yeah, this are is like, um, shit, I didn't write it down, I think it's like 61%. Good yeah. God. Yeah. Paint thinner. Hazmat. Hazmat. <laughs> Fear and loathing in Kentucky. Uh, branding, A+. Plus. Execution. It's a B. It's a generous B because I'm feeling nice. So Andrea, you, you've you've gone through the gauntlet here. Uh -huh. Top drink, we're going blackened. You know, top drink, we're going blackened. Top drinking buddy. Once upon a time, I was scrolling Instagram and I saw someone making great content about whiskey pairings and horror movies. And I thought, we gotta get him. We gotta get him on, uh, on Room Work TV. And so uh, I crying. reached out <laughs> and we became buds. And that's the note I want to drop off on. Cheers. Whiskey. I'm going to retire here. Yeah. Um, and uh, this will be my final episode. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've reached the pinnacle. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the fright flight. Fright flight. I'm your Lloyd. Oh. <laughs> Woo! So that's it for this episode of Horror on the Rocks. Once again, I'm Mike from Whiskey Morgue. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Horror on the Rocks. Again, I'm Mike from Whiskey Morgue. Thank you, Andrea, for joining me and doing this this evening. Um, remember to like, subscribe, comment, let me know what you're drinking, let me know what you think about these whiskeys if you've had any of them, 
And remember to let the uh, blood and booze flow. Cheers. Bye. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. There. Oh. Fucking hate it. I think I just peed. <laughs> I think I just like overrode my pelvic wall. <laughs> Can we jump in? <laughs>